My own children have taught me many lessons about my possessions. <laughs> that's true. My, both my son and my daughter have a personal interest in all that's mine. <laughs> in fact, my son once told me, Dad, this is the way it is. What's mine is mine and what's yours is mine. But was he actually pointing to our relationship with God? The fact of the matter is that we are ultimately heirs. You and I are heirs of the riches of God's creation. God has showered us with gifts because of the nature of God's love. God has, in fact, given to you and to me far more than our parents could ever give us or that we could give our children. God's love for us is so great and so complete that we are promised inheritance in God's eternal kingdom. Jesus is giving, his emptying himself on the cross is the ultimate model of generosity, total giving, freely offered out of a spirit of love. So a theology of Christian stewardship is then in direct contradiction to a philosophy of what's mine is mine. From the perspective of Jesus, one's possessions are only temporary belongings. They're ultimately God's. My perspective has been shaped in part by my travel outside of the United States. I have seen on numerous occasions what money could not buy, where there is no quality education, few paved roads, poor health care, little electricity or fuel, sparse communications, and undependable mail delivery, and yet, and yet again and again in my travels, I've experienced extraordinary outpourings of gratitude, a spirit of thanksgiving from those who have so little. I visited a congregation in Tanzania with dirt floors, benches on the floor, and two light bulbs hanging from the ceiling. And the priest explained to me how now this is a very special congregation because we have two light bulbs. And he was extremely grateful. I'll never forget the exuberant joy that I experienced at a cathedral in South Sudan with a very large congregation present when every member of the, that congregation came forward individually or in groups to make their personal offering to God. The choir sang and sang. The congregation sang and sang. It was the highlight of the service. And each person, regardless of how large or how small, was able to make his or her gift, every gift mattered. We're continuing that practice today. That practice witnessed by Jesus when he noticed that poor widow and we too are asked to give. Now we've formalized our liturgy. We make pledges and we write checks and we do it on a more private basis. But we're continuing that same practice witnessed by Jesus. On a very personal matter, I consider it a great, genuine privilege to be able to give. A privilege to express my gratitude toward, toward, to God for the gift of life and for the hope of salvation. So I give with great joy. I want to give. I want the church to flourish. I want more and more children 
going to Sunday school like they are this very morning at St. Andrews. I value what we are doing together in the church. But I do not see the church as a charity to be lined up against other charities. Our giving to the church is different. When we give to the church, we are rendering to God that which is God's. We're giving back to God a portion of what God has so graciously given to us. The church is the body of which Jesus is the head. The church is the gathering of those of us who are baptized, an assembly of faithful people who find their ultimate identity as members of Christ's body. You see, my giving to the church is much like my giving a very special Christmas gift to my spouse, one with personal meaning, one that is connected with a relationship, with a sense of gratitude, with my ultimate identity of who I am as a child of God. So I urge you, members of St. Andrews, to give, to give generously out of your abundance but I don't suggest giving till it hurts. I don't suggest giving till it hurts. No, I suggest going far beyond that. I suggest giving until it feels good. Very good indeed. Giving back to God a portion of what God has so graciously given you you will know the difference. Amen.